Hello, everybody. Welcome to SLU and welcome to this lecture about how you can develop your study strategies. My name is Katarina and I'm working at SLU University Library. I named this lecture Study Smarter and this is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, goals and motivation, how you can plan your studies, a little bit what to think about uh, before, during and after lectures and reading course literature, some memory techniques and then some final tips. I guess you all have different backgrounds and experience with you. Some have studied before, some may have, may have worked and some of you may become directly from high school. University studies differ from studies in high school, folk high school in several ways. And as an SLU student, you might have, find, have to find new ways of studying. Some may feel a little insecure. What does it really mean with academic studies? Students are expected to take a greater individual responsibility, which means that the teacher does not control everything you do. And it's more self-study. You have to plan how to learn yourself. And there will be different amount of guidance from different teachers and within different programs. There is usually a larger bulk of course literature to read. And you're expected to have some digital competence uh, to be able to use Word and PowerPoint and the learning platform Canvas, Canvas, for example. And if you're not familiar with the programs, you have to take responsibility for learning yourself. And here's YouTube, a really good resource. You will also write different texts and learn to read and write academic texts. And I will also mention this critical analytical approach. That's also something that uh, characterizes the university environment. Knowledge is not about just by reading and repeating what you have read. You have to critically review it, see the context, context and be able to use the knowledge in practice. Greater personal responsibility is a freedom but it also places demands on how, how you plan your study time. And with larger amounts of text, it can initially feel overwhelming. We often think that the answer when it gets hard is to work harder. Stressed, confused, writing cramps, just work harder. But no, uh, this is not possible. If you're going to take any of this lecture, lecture with you, it is this. Do not work harder, work smarter. This is where the study strategies comes in. There are methods that can help you learn more and also make sure that you have time left over for leisure, which is also important. With this lecture, we hope to give you tips and insights that can make it easier for you during your studies. Another thing that is also important to remember is that everyone has their own learning style. A method that suits your course mate might not be the best for you. And everything that I tell you today won't fit to everyone. So try things out and see what works for you. Let's talk about goals and motivation. Where do you study the best? Is it on the couch at home, at a cafe, together with others so you can discuss? Or do you rather study individually in a quiet room or with music in the background? We are all unique. Uh, we are all aware of this fact and it's a wonderful thing. But this also means that you have to put some time and thought into finding out who you are as a student. What makes you tick? What works for you? It is really important to keep in mind that nobody knows everything from the start. Learning to study is a process and only you can know what's right for you. There is no correct way. Do not hesitate to abandon a method if you find it doesn't work for you. Trust your knowledge about yourself. You will benefit from it in the long run. However, this means that you also have to be honest with yourself about what actually works. What works for you might vary from one course to another or depend on your general status. The same goes for your study space. Perhaps, perhaps you have the idea that all studying should be done by sitting one by, by one's computer, whereas your, you yourself read best in the bed, on a park bench or lounging in your favorite armchair. Maybe the most brilliant phrases come to you during your training sessions, or maybe the quiet area in the library is your favorite focus space. Here are some questions you should you could ask yourself. Are you a morning person or an evening person? Do you need peace and quiet or do you need some background noise to be able to concentrate? Do you prefer to study alone or would you rather sit with others? 
Remember that things might change a few years ahead. The situation may be different. Sometimes everything just feels uphill. At that point, it is tempting to start looking for shortcuts. And maybe you start asking yourself, do I really need to get hold of this book, attend all the lectures, hand in my report in time, take part in group projects? At that moment, all these questions might seem motivating and it might seem like a great idea to skip some of the activities. But turning things around, if you imagine you're not a student but sitting at work, would it be a be reasonable to consider if you really need to do these things like read the report my boss made me, take part in all the workplace meetings, keep the deadline, or collaborate with colleagues. Try to think of your studies as a full-time job because that is what they are. Let's talk about time management. Do you often delay things you have to do? Then you're not alone. There is something called procrastination. And the definition of procrastination is when we voluntarily put off something important, even if we realize it will have negative consequences. But why do we procrastinate? Some reasons might be difficult assignments. The tougher the task is, the more we procrasti often procrastinate, even if we know it's a bad idea in the long run. It can be an acquired habit. It is human to prefer pleasant activities and short-term rewards. Impulsive people tend to procrastinate more often, and some studies show that persons who are night people procrastinate to a higher degree. Procrastination does not have to be a bad thing. Working with tighter deadlines can make people more productive. But often the negative consequences are bigger than the advantages. Procrastination is also linked to perfectionism, angst and fear of fail failure. If you know that you often postpone to-dos, here are some tips to get started. Start with the fun parts and set up clear goals and sometimes even sub-goals. Talk to others about your subject and arrange to meet with course mates or friends and work together. Maybe you need to sit in a quiet room, book a group room and give yourself rewards when you finish things. And some more tips are stop yourself from doing anything else. Try to find a place that boosts your inspiration and focus. And you can also try to break up your coursework into smaller segments, then it's often easier to start. Make up a plan for the day, including both work time as well as breaks. Here come some app tips which can help you stay focused and stop procrastinate. And the image here is from the forest app. When you study undisturbed for a long time, trees start to grow in the app. And if you least easily lose focus and have difficulty not to surf while you're studying, there are also apps and programs where you can decide which websites and apps you should block. And here are two examples of block apps. Getting good at planning also means getting good at prioritizing. If you make plans for preparations, schedule time, free time and so on, you will get a better overview of how, you, how to pr prioritize your own time. It is wise to plan both short term and long term. What is the goal of the course as a whole and how are you going to get there? When it comes to the course as a whole, every course has a syllabus a document about this content, how the course is given, examination information and what you're expected to learn in the course. And always check out the course schedule before the course begins and keep it on hand through the whole course. And before the examination it's also wise to check out the learning objectives since that is the content you will be tested on and these objectives will help you to focus when studying. So here are some questions to ask yourself. Uh, what does the syllabus contain? Which are the learning objectives in the course? What course information has the teacher presented? And check out the course schedule, but also the reading list. Are there any reading directions, for example? And this is a long-term plan, but also smart. But it's also smart to plan for what needs to be done this week, and what should be your priorities be today, also the short-term plan. The Algonquin College Library has made a short video on how you can think when you plan your study week. Let's take a look at the video. 
video will explain how to create a weekly schedule. Begin by finding a weekly schedule template that works for you. You can use the template below or use calendars on programs such as Outlook or Google Calendar. Start by adding your classes. Next, add any personal commitments that are scheduled for the week, including appointments and work. Now add in blocks of study time. Try to spread these times across the week so that they're not all concentrated on already busy days. Think about the times that you will be most productive and when you might be able to work without as much distraction. For each hour of class, you should be scheduling at least one hour of study time. Add the specific classwork you need to do for the week into these study periods. This can include assigned readings, assignments, studying, etc. Your weekly schedule can change every week to reflect what you have going on each week. These schedules are flexible. If you discover your plan isn't working, you can make adjustments. Congratulations, you now know how to create a weekly schedule. Thanks for watching. There are several apps that can help you to, to plan your studies, and here are some examples. And this is, is a screenshot from Trello, one of the tools which is easy to work with, where you can create li different lists with different cards, and then you can easily move the cards. And uh, Trello is also perfect if you work with, uh, in groups with projects together, and it's easy to keep track on what everyone should do. When it comes to more short-term planning, like planning for your study day, an advice is to set aside time for both studying and time for leisure and also make clear goals for the day. What should you do today and how should you do it? And the tips is also to schedule your study sessions and what, what works best varies from one person to another. However, reading or working for like 20 to 45 minutes before a break usually works well. But the brain needs to rest, so it's beneficial to do some stretching or take an outdoor walk to get some fresh air during the break. And when you study, try to do that without distractions, like put the phone in flight mode, turn off notifications. If you wish to test a specific method for putting structure and focus into your studying, the well-known Pomodoro uh, technique is worth looking at. The concept involves working focused on tasks for 25 minutes without any distractions, then taking a break of 3 to 5 minutes and then repeating. Each period, period of focused work is called a pomodoro. That's the Italian word for tomato, after the tomato-shaped egg bell that the Italian student who developed this method in the 1980s used. And after four pomodoros, you should take a longer break of at least 15 to 30 minutes before returning to work. For, for the sessions for self-study, there are various timer tools that can help you study focused and tell you when it's time for a break. Some of these apps even keep track of how much you studied during the week. And here are two app tips, Tomato Timer and Focus Keeper. I think it's time for a short break just to get some energy so stand up uh, or and do some stretching lift your hands move your legs go around a little bit um, maybe dance or something <laughs> so roll your shoulders or whatever so now i think we can continue during your higher education studies, you will probably read and write more than earlier, and maybe in new ways. With a larger amount of text to get through that you're used to, it might be seem overwhelming. However, there are good strategies for reading course literature. And once again here, remember that everyone has their own learning style, so you have to try things out and see what fits for you. If you can prepare through a lecture, you will probably absorb more, and the preparations are not uh, don't have to be so time consuming, but can give a lot. And here are some tips on how to prepare. Find out what the lecture will be about. Visit your course homepage or schedule for information. And also skim through relevant course literature to familiarize yourself with the subject. Maybe the teacher has given you some reading advices. 
check out Google, YouTube or Wikipedia on the subject. You don't have to have expectations to get the hang of everything, but just skimming through it will make it easier to follow the lecture if you have some prior knowledge of terminology, for example, current issues and so on. Also try to establish a routine after the lecture where you go through what you have learned. Run through your notes directly after a lecture. Try to do that. It will jog your memory. And was there anything you did not not understand? Is there maybe something you need to check? If so, try to do this uh, not too long after the lecture, while you still remember what you need to find out. And also uh, talk to your course mates. What did they pick up from the lecture? You can learn together and from each other during the lecture. If you have prepared, as I talked about, you will keep up better. And take short notes, but do not get caught up in writing down everything the teacher says, because then it can be difficult to think at the same time. So take short notes, write questions, post, or maybe dry, draw pictures. You can also try to write on one page in your pad, and then the other page you can process the notes the same day or later on and make mind maps or summaries. And is there anything you do not understand? Don't hesitate to, to ask the teacher. And here comes one tip. Uh, OneNote is a really flexible tool for note taking. And as a SLU student, you can download and install the Microsoft Office 365 for free. And in, in this package, OneNote is included, so you can you can get it OneNote for free as an SLU student. And in OneNote, you can collect and organize your notes. You can uh, create different notebooks and different collections. And you can sync between devices. Everything is synchronized and saved to your profile. So you don't have to be afraid that something will be lost. And you can use your mobile or you can use your computer. And it's possible to uh, type with a keyboard or draw freely. You can cut from the pictures and sounds and you can also copy text from the web and the link will be automatically included. So check this tool out, OneNote, if you're interested. When it comes to reading course literature, there are also some tips. Try to see the big picture first and then the details. It is easy to focus on details especially if you're not used to read course literature, but try to stop and think about where the detail belongs in a larger perspective. And if you're reading a book, the back page, page often tells you what subjects are dealt with in a book and what questions are answered and what perspective and theories are covered. So it's a really good thing to start to read the back page of the book and also look at the cover, of course. And also scan through the table of contents and to get an idea of what the chapters are about. You can also try to make the headings of content into questions to learn more. Then summarize. What is the point? Do not read too long. Stop after, after like 10 or 20 minutes and try to concretize and summarize what you read. One way of approaching the book could be like turning into a mind map. And then you can draw the mind map where, for example, the chapters are notes with pictures and headings for content. And one advantage with drawing this kind of skeleton of the book on a paper is that it takes the drama out of the situation and it makes reading it less overwhelming. And if you, if you want to create a mind map, then you also have the whole course book personally summarized on paper, which you can use from the whole course through. through through and also when you're studying them for the exam. Try to try out uh, different types of reading. Which method works best for you? Do you like to use a highlighter when you read, writing notes in the margin or summarizing on a separate sheet of paper? And also get the facts. Look up words and concepts that comes up when you start reading and that you do not know. Get in the habit of always doing that so you learn more. And maybe you have to reread the parts of the text that are particularly challenging. You can also uh, ask your uh, course mates. Maybe you can take time to discuss the text together to reach deeper understanding. You, you maybe could divide different parts of the book and explain them to each other. 
it might help you discover and fill knowledge gaps. Hello again. Have you ever tried listening to course literature? Sometimes it might be of great help to listen through the text you're reading, or maybe read and listen at the same time. And all SLU students have access to TourTalk. That's a program for listening to the text on your screen. And if you need audiobooks or other types of reading or writing support, you please contact us at the SLU University Library so we can help you with that. Learning consists of both understanding knowledge and remembering it. Maybe you think that you have a hard time learning because you have such a bad memory. But the positive thing is that by using different techniques, we can create connections in the brain to what we want to remember and also improve our memory. We usually remember things that are interesting, things which are, unu are unusual or unexpected, and uh, things that activate several senses and emotions. And we often also remember what came first and last. But it is also possible to practice to create connections to what we want to remember. And here there are different memory techniques to use. One tip is that uh, to try to use humor in the content you're going to learn. And here are images useful. Can you maybe associate the content you should learn with a funny image? An alternative to images is to use places that are familiar to you. And then you can try to connect what you're going to learn with different places. It could be places in your home or other places you know well. Then you visualize what you're going to learn and connect it to the different places. Sometimes it can help to also physically go around in a room or area and repeat the things you want to learn. And then when you want to remember what you've learned, you can visualize the walk in your head. It may not be suitable for everyone to work with images, but for some it may work better to learn different things by using words. For example, to use acronyms uh, of the words you want to remember, or like sentences like this to remember the order and names of the planets. You can also create rhymes or songs. For example, I remember that I learned the German pre prepositions by singing. And I have a colleague who wrote poems when she was learning new English words. And you can try to write with different uh, colors and then re remember the colors of the, of the different things you learn on the exam. And not all techniques are suitable for everyone, once again. So you have to test yourself to find something that suits you. And maybe it will be a mixture of different methods. Repetition may not be a specific technique, but it is still important when it comes to remembering. When you rehearse, the connections in the brain are strengthened, and it is therefore better to spread learning over time instead of studying the night before the exam. Repetition does not mean that you have to redo everything, but it can, for example, be going through the book you have read and looking at the headlines or if you have highlighted text. And it can be reading your notes to activate the memory and remember the details. Explaining it to someone else is also a form of repetition that is usually good for learning as you must understand what you've learned to be able to explain to another person. But how often should you then rehearse? Uh, like much else, it's, it is individual. Here you get to try out what fits you, but the point is that the repetition should take place before you have time to forget, forget everything. There are some things you also need to learn by heart, such as words or plant names in Swedish and Latin. And there are good apps and web resources for it where you can create or you can also reuse other people's so-called flashcards and then you can test yourself. And Quizlet and Anki are two examples of these kind of apps. And here I show uh, an example of how, how Quizlet works. Uh, in this example I want to learn the scientific name of the plants. So first here I see the Swedish name and by clicking the card I can then see the scientific name. And uh, Quizlet also has a, f a feature where you can March cards together and it's also possible if you rather want to write the answer for example here I should write the, the Swedish name of the plant so it can be worth trying these apps we're close to the end of this lecture and here come some final tips we also have a canvas resource with tips on how you can develop your study strategies there you will find the information that I have talked about today, but also more material, more tips. And you can find it from the student web, and I will show you how. 
So now we're on the student web at slu.se and under support and services. On the left hand, you see the link study techniques. Click there and then click on the go to study strategies in Canvas, the green button. Then you will find more information. You can see that the modules uh, have the same names as I used in the lecture. And we can take a look at the uh, reading and note taking module. And here we can click on the note taking strategies. And here you can read more about uh, how to take notes. And we have a vi short video about making mind maps and also a video about using OneNote. Another way to navigate through the modules uh, is to click on the modules link to the left. And here you can go directly to one specific page if you want to uh, learn more about uh, procrastination, how, you, how to avoid that, for example. We also have some tips for home studying uh, and also links to information about how it can be to study in Sweden, how the higher education is in Sweden and uh, the learning environment and teaching style, for example. So we hope that you will find this research useful. Finally, don't forget that you need more than just to study. When you do other things, the brain will process information. So have fun, spend time with your friends, sleep, uh, eat and drink, exercise. And remember, you also have support here at SLU. You can contact uh, us at the library or the study guidance at SLU or the student healthcare. And we are happy to answer your questions and help you sort out the problems you may have with your studies. So don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you for today and good luck with your studies here at SLU.